Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. You are listening to the RAP podcast, the Welsh Regional Rugby Appreciation Pod, where we try to cover all the important issues on and off the field in Welsh Regional and National Rugby. If you'd like to get in touch with the show, all of that information is at the end, so you'll just have to bear with us and get to that bit. In the meantime, enjoy this week's show. Good evening and welcome to the RAP podcast. Um, hope you're all well. I'm joined by Lee, Carwin and Reese. How are we doing, gents? Nice. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad this yeah, week. Okay, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, in case you're wondering why I'm taking the lead uh, this week, it's because Lee is uh, full up with cold. So uh, like I'm going <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> so to I'm gonna do most of the uh, talking tonight. But um, we've got a lot to talk about. It was a busy weekend, a very good weekend. Well, for three of the teams, at least. Um, should we kick off with drink of the week? Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, so... Come on then, Carwin, what have you got for your drink of the week today? Well, I'm on a, I haven't had time to go anyway. I've been pretty busy. So I've got my uh, Under the Stairs Stella Artois this evening, which I will be continuing to drink. The backup Stella. The backup Stella. We love, we love a bit of Stella. So uh, yeah. I will be drinking that tonight. Never let you down. Lovely stuff. Okay, what about you, Evie? So what have you got tonight, Benny? Uh, yeah, well, I've only got one leg, so very similar to Carwin. I've just got the the Guinness tonight, uh, just to uh, as a bit of a painkiller. Lovely stuff, Lee. What you got, lem sip or? I've I've got a, <laughs> an order of lem sip with with my boy. So as soon as he's finished doing the washing up, he's going to bring me up a lem sip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. It re- like, every time I laugh, it's like my chest's about to explode. So, yeah. Don't know talking about the Ospreys and how amazing they are. I'll be fucking wetting myself. Well, look, oh, save, yeah. save, your, save your voice for your scarlet spit. Look, I know there's not much to say about it, but just take your time now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's off. <laughs> he's dying on camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right. Um, what have I got tonight? I have got a bottle of Amstel tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, which, um, if you, any of you go to the Prince Party Stadium these days, you know that Amstel is now the lager of choice because um, it used to be Heineken, didn't it? But they had to uh, did, yeah. remove the Heineken because it was uh, too strong for some supporters. I don't know if you remember, but it was all that nonsense going on in the stands, people running on the pitch with antisocial behaviour. So they reduced it to Amstel, which is a lighter lag. I quite like Amstel, actually. Um, it's only 4.1%, but it doesn't taste like it. It doesn't taste like a weak lager. The beer um, champion. It's nice. I, I have that when I go out. I... Yeah, but what I will say, um, if you've had a pint of Amstel in the stadium, as I did in the autumn, it's fucking awful. Um, it just doesn't <laughs> taste like... It does not taste like Amstel. It's weak watered out piss, and you pay seven quid a pint for it. Oh, I know oh, the prices. I know the yeah, the price is horrendous. And yet you see people up and down their seats with trays and trays of beer, don't you? 
And they don't know if it's just me. Do you ever look at them and think, how have you got the money to afford all these beers? Oh, at don't that price? Awesome King Coyd, man. <laughs> I ordered oh, a round of some food. Last time I was here, I ordered a round of some food. And she said it was 68 quid. I said, you better check that again. <laughs> and she did, like, still 68 quid. I said, I'll get the credit card out. I'll tell you what, that was horrendous. Absolutely shocking, yeah. the, the prices. I don't, have a good and they've got no, man, no money in the WRU. <laughs> My pint's paid for Gatland, I tell you. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Right then. Um, okay, so let's get straight into it then. Um, mm. Very encouraging weekend for Welsh rugby. Fantastic. Um, apart Ooh. from one team, obviously, which I'll uh, go on to later. Um, I think there's only one place to start, really, and that has to be with Carwin and the Ospreys, because I think we all got to give credit where it's due. That was one of the best Welsh wins in Europe. Yes, it was, Lee, and you can shake your head. You've got, you've got to own this one. That was undoubtedly one of the best Welsh wins by a Welsh team in Europe. As simple as that. It, it, it was incredible. OK, because I'm not feeling well. I, I haven't got the energy to come back at you on it, mate. So you can have this one. Make the most of it. Uh, won't last long. Carwin, take it away. Osprey's oh, famous win in Montpellier. Off you yeah, go, man. Listen, what a fantastic result. But, you know, we, we talked last week and there was, it was like there was no team, no cohesion. And about building that team around um, Kieran Williams and Morgan Morris. And two of our mm. players last night, Kieran Williams and Morgan Morris. I mean... Yeah. The, 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 Toby Booth made some great changes, and I t- everyone thought we were going to get smashed. You know, yeah. like myself included. Hands up! You know, I thought, "Oh God, here we go." Yeah. Prior to team selection, this was obviously. But I sat down, and I was like, "When when when um when Montpellier got that first penalty, I thought, oh, God, here we go.' They're running up the field. We're going to have this now. They're going to they're going to they're going to have us like." But then we just came to life. And it was fantastic. I was sitting here. The dog was, dog was jumping 10 foot with me off the sofa. And it, it, it was just amazing. Like, And we were like one inch away with Cuthbert's boot from a bonus point try. They played like a team. They all wanted to get with a double tackle, smashing. Our forwards dominated them. You know, and, and like like I mentioned to you guys even in that text, you know, the, the, when the commentator says, you know, the Ospreys have just beaten the Premier team in, in France, possibly Europe. You know, we and, and we haven't won... Yeah. Yeah, and we haven't won for 11 games, which dates back to 2017 in Europe for us. That's an incredible stat, isn't it? You know, you know. And, then, and then to come out and beat them. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. It was like watching the Ospreys well, of old. Yeah. It was. It was like watching the Ospreys of old. And I, I was so pleased for them. I was so pleased. Yeah. For them. I was pleased for the supporters who, who went all out to Montpellier to, to watch it. You know, yeah. just wish there was more of us there. Um, Absolutely. I tell you what I was funny, you know, Carwin. I, I don't know if you noticed this, but on Twitter, <laughs> well, S4, I didn't see the game on S4C. I was watching the BT, uh, Jamie Lyle, excellent commentator, by the way. Um, they said on S4C, apparently, it was the Ospreys' first ever win in France. And like <laughs> everyone on Twitter, like, you know, all the Osprey fans are going, it's the first time we won in France. Except it wasn't. Ospreys had actually won in France back in 2008. Can you remember the team? No, Carwin? No, I wouldn't, well, it wasn't be a risk. Who lost out in the quarterfinals? It Bayon? begins with a B. Um, no, it's not Bayon. Bayon. It does begin with B. Nope. <clears throat> nope. Right, Bayon. Do you know? know? Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Nope. Bordeaux Beg. Nope. Come on, then. It's Borg on. In ah. 2008, oh it was Borg on. Yeah. But uh, it was quite funny seeing all these Ospreys going, yeah, it's the first time you won in France. Uh, <laughs> you're an Ospreys fan, and no, you're wrong. <laughs> You've won before in France. It was a long time ago in Italy. A long time but, ago. Um, yeah, it, it was just terrific, wasn't it? And I don't think, like I said, nobody nobody saw that result coming. I mean, that's a huge upset. Do you know what I it's think is a game changer for you for you guys now? Owen Williams I hope at so. ten. Like all no, that will be the game be... changer. <clears throat> Owen Williams at ten because you know I'm not being funny to chat wash. I think he's a very talented young player, but you've got a grown up at ten now. You know he's got a lot very of experience. Classy, Owen Williams. He was very good. He, he pulled the strings well. And he's one for the future, Jack Walsh, but we talked about it before, didn't we? He seems to make big mo- uh, big mistakes at key moments. And he does lack yeah, that sort learning. of game match you know, experience he, at times. He is. He's he is learning, learning. And it'll come. Um, and, and he's done really well for us so far. You know, yeah, odd, odd mistakes, you know, acceptance. But that's that's going to happen. Um, I'm just like... Owen Williams steered that ship fantastically last night. He did. You know, he did. The, fr- the front row stood up immensely. 
the front know, five they, they, epic. Oh, the front five, yeah, absolutely. They, they were everywhere. And like when Jack Morgan came on, made a huge difference as well. You know, yeah. and Hugh, Sut- Hugh Sutton, you know, he's a lump of a lad as well. Massive differences. I, I was so, so proud last night watching them play. It was just, uh, it was just nice to see and hope we can carry on. Like we said last week about, you know, when you're in Europe, you need to win your home games and get a bonus point away. Well, we've got a bonus point at home and we won our away game. So we're, yeah. we're back in the mix, you know. Um, <laughs> Montpellier at home now, uh, beginning of January, followed by mm. Leicester away. It's on. It is yeah, on. Leicester, Leicester didn't make that many changes and beat Clermont at home. So everyone mm. said we played the second string team. It wasn't that much of a second string team, to be honest. If you look, they only made, I think, like three replacements Montoya, Ben Youngs. Um, it was a third guy. I can't remember the name of the third guy, but anyway, there was a third guy, maybe a fourth, but that's it. Um, when you when you look at the Ospreys, though, and the players they had missing as well, uh, out in Montpellier, let's not forget, mate, there was no Gar Vanscombe, there was no Alwyn Jones, there was no Dan Lydiat, no George North, no Dowie Lake, no George North, and no Owen Watkin. So that, for me, that makes it even more impressive. There were loads of key men missing for Ospreys, and they went to Montpellier in their own backyard. It's never easy to win in France. Yeah. And they fronted up, and I thought they were absolutely terrific. And it just shows but you he, what this Ospreys team are capable of, isn't it? You know, yeah, it was again, a game like plan, said, wasn't there? There was, there was, there, everybody knew the game plan, sort of thing, and you could tell that's happening all the time. Like even proper teamwork, even, proper teamwork. Yeah, even Reece Webb looked good, but that's a, got a good for a five or two. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, John, I normally slate Webb, Webb, but I thought he was fantastic last night. He, had, he, he, had a great, good, he, was, he looked like the player he was when he was playing for Wales. Credit was due, he was good, but he only ever does it in. But uh, but we Reece Webb only ever does it in like one or two games. He'll have like one amazing game, and then one okay game, and then he'll just go back to to cocking everything up again. And I that for me, like I could see it, there was a, a couple of Scarlet supporters going, "Why isn't Reece Webb in the worst setup again?" I go, oh, "For fuck's sake, here we go again!" You know, <laughs> and just because Gareth he's... Davis isn't there. Listen. Well, no, I think Gareth Davis is Scarlet, at his time. You can have your Scarlet spit in a minute. Left. No, no, I, right. I was saying it. I was trying to praise the Ospreys, right? I know this is unusual, like, but he, for, for me, <laughs> the, the bit from, from yesterday was defence because the, the, the pressure that you put on their ball... They they just kept dropping it, knocking it on. Yeah, their kicks yeah, were way with, yeah. so they couldn't they couldn't get into an attacking system. You know, they, they, their attack just didn't exist because your defence was right up in their face, and your defence hasn't been in people's faces like that. It hasn't been that aggressive for, for a long time. time. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm done now. <clears throat> yeah, but you look just going back to what <laughs> himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going back to what you were saying, Jamie, there, um, about the players that are out, those yeah. lads who, who were playing, they've played them through a lot of the season in those close games. These are a lot of the lads who didn't go away with the Welsh squad to the Six uh, to the Autumn Internationals, you know? These are yeah. the lads who, who, who really sort of toiled to get those close results, so we've been lucky in a couple of them. And now, bang, they've just gone and beaten the form team in Europe. You know, yeah. bar Leinster, you know. Um, good luck. Hopefully we'll move on next week and t- we'll take a backward step. I tell you what, I've, um, oh, go on, go on. Lee. Between Carwin and and Reese and his bloody the Sharks and now Carwin and on Montpellier, fuck, you know, it's going to be oh, a nightmare for the rest of the season, isn't it? It's I know. Be... <laughs> They can get pasted Listen, 50 points by oh, Zebra. Oh, yeah. But did, were you there that day when we played Montpellier? I accept, did you see the I shots? Accept it's one, <laughs> Listen, I accept it's one game. I accept it's one game. But, Lee, when we <laughs> smash you next week at uh, Swansea.com, um, then it's going to be on We'll, uh, we'll make our predictions <laughs> later for that. But, we'll uh, get to that one later. The derby's come in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stay, in, abusive. <laughs> stay with the Ospreys. We've got a question for one of our listeners because we asked our listeners to get in touch. This is from Fionn <laughs> Reese. Um, I think I know Carwin's answer to this. Uh, should Gatlin call up Morgan Morris for the Six Nations after another dominant display yesterday? What do you think, lads? Should Morgan Morris be called up? Is he ready well, for his national rugby? Do you think the conversation, shouldn't he? Absolutely. I think he should be in the squad. Um, like like Gatlin's always said, you know, if you're old enough, you're good enough. Um, who would you drop? Getting, uh, yeah, who would I drop? If, yeah, that's, that's the issue. Uh, who would you McLeod. drop? He's one of the best turnovers in in the UK. At yeah, the he's got no, the highest no. turnover rate no. in the UK. Well, compared to who? Well, everybody Jack Morgan, else. Tom, Jack yeah. Morgan, Tommy Revel, 
Yeah, he's got he's uh, got a yeah. higher turnover rate than those two. Listen, he does, he's, he's had his no offense, mate. He's had his one cap. That's the way to replace. And in that in that one game, he turned over four um, uh, turned over the ball four times. Yeah, that's not a lot in and, eighty minutes, though, is it? Well, that's four times more than anybody <laughs> else in the team did. So, you know, he just, played you know well I mean? against George and Finn, didn't he? I didn't know. I'm saying the clubs. I'm having to dig at dig at Lee with the scarlet. <laughs> really? I, I, I've I, guessed. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Who, I don't know who I'd replace at the moment. I'd just extend the squad to put a minute. You know, give him the give him the teachers of being in that squad because I tell you what, that boy's gonna get better and better. He, and and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He'd be in the world squad. I mean, the one thing I will say is we don't have much depth for eight, do we? Because no. you know we keep relying on Toby Falato, and then yeah. we sort of play players out of position to cover eight, don't we? Like you know, Josh McCown's not yeah. really an eight, is he? No, I he's not. Say. You know, he's a seven. He's a six, but he, he's he a can six or seven. Do a job. Yeah, he yeah. can do a job at eight, a competent job, but he's not in eight. And no. I think, you know, with Alan Wayne, right, it's a bit of a shame what's happened to Aaron because he's had injuries, loss of yeah. form. I personally don't believe he's a number eight. I think Aaron was at his best when he was blindside. Um, and that's how he came to prominence, actually. But Wayne Pivot wanted him as an eight, and it's going to be interesting to see with Gatland. Back. Does Gatland see him as an eight? Because he was very, um, you know, he's a popular member of the squad in the Gatland, you know, and he likes Alan Wayne, right? But does he see him as that number eight? So there is an opportunity for Morgan Morris. There's a lot of competition about Bob, but at number eight, they no. may be in position available, you know? Mm. But you look at, you look back now to 2011 when you were choosing the squad for the World Cup. That was a young squad, you know, and. I think, like, you know, there was Toby was young boy there, Sam Warburton and Leds, you know, it was a young back row. You know, I think there is a possibility he could could pull up Morgan Morris and stick him with Revel and, and, and Jack Morgan. Who knows? Yeah. But he's, de- he's certainly definitely up for debate and a strong contender. I think the, yeah. I mean, the, quality of the, the quality of depth we've got across the back row in Wales at the minute is... Insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. And you've got people like Navidi coming back. You had um, Ellis, Jenkins. Ellis Jenkins came back yesterday, you know. So, you know, the, the difficult bit is who do you drop? Yeah, <clears> that's who, it. Again, who do you drop? Because there's only a 30 man squad or something goes to the World Cup, isn't it? So, if you're going to bring, it's all well and good in the Six Nations, and you can kind of have, you know, attached players who train and then somebody gets injured and then you swap over and all that kind of stuff. You were thirty men in the uh, in that World Cup, and that's you know that's got to be it for pretty much three months. But it? then there's backup, isn't there? You know they got, they they train with a bigger squad. They have those backup players due to injuries. You know they're on the next flight or whatever. Mm. They know the place, but yeah, no, I see, I see what you mean. But yeah, thanks yeah. for that question, um, Morgan Morris. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. I, I would have a look there. I think I like the look of him a lot. And another Osprey I do think we should look at as, as well is um, Reece, what's his name? Is it Reese Davis? The lock? Davis. I it thought you were going to say Webb yeah. then. I thought you were going to say Reese. My Webb. mind went blank. Okay. My mind went well, blank. <laughs> Webb Web will, Web will be in any way. You, know, be in a do you reckon? Do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. If he, you if think that's going to call Webb up? If he keeps playing up to that stand that he did last night, yes. Hmm. I think he's had an indifferent season for me, we swear, but I've got to be honest. Um, I'm not sure whether I would bring him back, but he did play very well last night. Credit was due. Um, yeah. yeah, fair play. What I um, need to do now, isn't it, is just keep up that consistency, isn't it? Like, you know, they had a disappointing game against Leicester. They had this yeah. out-of-the-world game. I couldn't believe what I was watching when I was uh, when I saw the game last night, isn't it? It was just like, whoa, yeah. like, isn't it? And even put... Well done, Ospreys on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it. shocked I was. <laughs> um, oh, it, it, for me, it was the result of the weekend, not just out of the Welsh teams, but right across the board. I mean, the whole of social media was talking about it. It got a lot of attention, and rightly so. It was a huge upset. It was a brilliant win. It was yeah. one of the, you know, I'm not saying it's the best Welsh win in Europe. No, um, but it's the my, Yeah. But it, terrific, because nobody expected it. No, I certainly didn't. And nobody did, did they? Nobody ever expected our space to front up in that manner. Not just the way, well, none of the us way they did it. it did we? We, all, we all bet against them, didn't we? We did, mm. yeah. I thought you were going to get stuffed. Yeah, yeah, I did, but um, credit to them. Well done, Osprey. Fantastic result. Just the shot in the arm that Welsh rugby needed, I think, you know? This week, this weekend, just before this Christmas. Week. Just before yeah. the Scarlet's match. <laughs> Indeed. Um, right, OK, so that's Osprey's done with them. Well done to them. Um, should we move on to Cardiff, though? Cardiff, 
up at Newcastle winning 47-10. <laughs> um, I think Newcastle made 10 changes. That's what I read. But I mean, it doesn't matter to say you just played what's in front of you. But uh, okay, we still want to talk about this one now, 47-10. Yeah, no, absolutely. It? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was quite surprised with the, the manner of the victory. Um, I thought when I saw like, like 10 changes or what have you, that uh, we, we've got a good chance of winning up there, especially on the form that we've been showing lately. I, um, and well, from start to finish, I thought that the Cardiff like just brought an intensity uh, for, for the 80 minutes, um, maybe dropped off in the last 10, possibly. Um, uh, but apart from that, Going back to the thing about game plan, everybody seemed to know what they were doing. There was always a smattering of forwards in the back line to sort of batter it up. Uh, tries came for, uh, like, Reese Carey's uh, starting to get a, a habit of scoring off those short balls, um, uh, crashing over the line from uh, Thomas Williams. Um, I It was lovely to see uh, Owen Lane, the lane train, back on the wing yeah, and back. marking his... Um, Marking his return with a try and setting up a try for uh, Josh Adams as well. In one of the most tries of the week. It was a great, great step. Like, great it was, step. It was, was a bit of poetry, like it. It was absolutely <laughs> awesome. Uh, it was so wonderful to see. And um, and yeah, and the front five and the back row. Like I'm going to separate them. Like the the front five just went at them. Um, when when um, Tamani was rested because he's our He's our big boy in the engine room, isn't he? Uh, that mm-hmm. I, I was a bit yeah. concerned going against an English pack. When I looked at um, the results um, of Newcastle in the the, the English Premiership, um, I noticed you know they, 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 they're not winning all the time, but then they they do go and take a scalp like Leicester or Gloucester or Exeter and away as well. Uh, so I I wasn't comfortable, you know, thinking oh this is a this is a banker, um, but the. the the front row and then the back row with a returning Ellis Jenkins who got man of the match as well on his uh, his first competitive game in I don't know how long. Uh, yeah, it's great to see him back, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Josh Adams' first try where um, uh, Ellis Jenkins like so took the ball and it looked like he was like just stuttering and not sure what to do. Then he charged it up, um, took the tackle, put Falatau in space who gave the pass to uh, Adams who went over... Uh, for the first try, and everything, the build-up to all the tries, it was just intelligent. Everybody was making the right choices. Um, there, there were there were times where um, we did get ourselves isolated, but not many times. Uh, everybody sort of knew what they were doing in that respect. Um, and then I, I had a conversation with some people about, um, like, once again, the line-out was a little bit dodgy. Uh, so my hills throwing in can get uh, suspect uh, something. Probably Lee can attest to as a, as an ex uh, Scarlet hooker as well, but that my hill in defence and as part of that really dominant front row had an absolute belter of a game in that respect. I remember watching one of the ones uh, when their forwards were coming forward. We got a few um, turnovers by just holding the attacking player up, and I just remember um, uh, Falatau and. Um, uh, my Hill holding up the attack in Newcastle player and chatting to the referee, going now, now, <laughs> what have you? And then the turnover came, sort of thing. So, um, yeah, you've got to play. You know, it was, it was ten changes, you probably a weaker side and stuff like that. But I, I said it before. Um, you know, Cardiff can sort of um, drop to the level of the side they're playing and play really awfully, even if they scrape wins. Um, and we didn't. We were clinical. We were absolutely ruthless. Uh, and I'm well, and we're top of our group. I just want to. Well, like you that. said, you know, <laughs> fair play. But like you said, like Newcastle is a tough place to go. It's well, it's like yeah. it's like it's like Galway. It's it's, it's yeah. England's Galway. You know, it's a horrendous place to go when they get that weather up there. But they, yeah, it looked it good. looked freezing up there. But it did, it did, it, didn't it? Oh, like the, somebody said there, there, was, there were three of them wearing tights, and he said uh, for wearing tights, they best have a good game. Um, and it was, <laughs> it was Josh Adams. Um, I think a couple oh, yeah. of other players, but just uh, and you, the bench is starting to work for Cardiff as well. So we brought on a new front row of what if Belcher, Thayer, and Will Davis King. Thayer really struggled when he came on. Belcher is turning into a really good hooker for us. Teddy Williams is just turning into an absolute class uh, forward for us, and Ratty, um, and Ellis Bevan at uh, nine. Mason Grady took the intercept as well, and he's got bags of pace for a. Six foot five man running like that, like isn't it? I hope he carries it's promising on to Cardiff. It's, it's promising to Cardiff going forward. You know, it's just a shame they're using losing Max Llewellyn as well. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some great players there coming through. No, absolutely. Like, uh, and it, that, that was going to be the five years' time uh, set midfield, wasn't it? It was going to be Max yeah. Llewellyn and Mason Grady. But, uh, how well. <laughs> what did you guys make of it? There is something <laughs> clicking at Cardiff. And I go back to it. It's ever since, ironically, Edgate. You know, ever since the whole nonsense of Edgate, Cardiff have been excellent since then. <laughs> okay, you know, you, you can question the standard of the opposition. They'd be playing, you know, the Sharks, and they, 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 they are facing <laughs> inferior opposition. But at the end of the day, that's not Cardiff's fault. They play what's in front of them. They beat what's in front of them. They are far tougher chance in the head, but they're in the habit of winning, and they look very, very good. You know, and I yeah. think they are going to continue to be the strongest Welsh team this year, although I do think... With Ospreys, I touched on you with Owen Williams at 10. I do think they're going to make a late surge now, the Ospreys. You know, because if they can go and win in Montpellier like that, they can really push on and win anyway. Yeah, no one. That, should, that should give them a load of confidence now going forward. And I do think we're going to see an interesting tussle now between Cardiff and, and Ospreys, perhaps. But um, fair play to them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mate. I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm yeah, happy to get a wheelchair. But, but... <laughs> yeah, we'll have a look after you, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Lee, do you have anything to say on the Newcastle Cardiff game? Anything you want to add to it? or? Yeah. <laughs> Why I I I think everyone just underestimated the Welsh teams this weekend. I think we've had uh, you know everybody's been talking about how good the Gallagher Premiership is and how good the Pro 14 is and slagging off the URC and what have you. And I think they just underestimated the the Welsh teams. Well, a lot of the URC teams, a lot of the URC teams won the exception of Zebra. So. You know, it, I think generally, too many English sides and too many, <clears throat> too many French sides believe in their own hype, whereas the Welsh sides this weekend actually just knuckled down and got on with the job. You know, yeah. and and I think that's that can only be good for us in the future. Um, for, specifically for the Cardiff game again, I think there were quite a few errors in that game as well. Yeah. So you know, if they'd have been sorted out, you you were looking at another five or six tries. You know. So I, I think it's good that we we we're all kind of starting to play with the exception of the Ospreys, obviously. Uh, a, a wild, expansive, creative, interesting game. You you Ospreys can just stick to their kick and chase car. You you carry on, that's fine. It's, it works. Hey, whatever, whatever works. Whatever <laughs> works on them. But no, it, it it's you know, I say Owen Williams is a very creative player as well. And I think that's <clears throat> That's only good for for Welsh rugby that the type of game everybody's playing now is more expansive and more interesting and more creative, and you know I think that's that's the good thing for me for this weekend. It it, it was enjoyable to watch, not just the scores. You know, sometimes you can have <clears throat> you know you can score four tries off driving lineouts and what have you. You know, it's it's not an exciting game, so to score tries the way everyone has this weekend has been encouraging. So, hi. Mm, absolutely, indeed. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's Cardiff. Well done to them. They're top of uh, Pool A with 10 points. Um, <laughs> Scarlets are also top of their pool as well. They've got 10 points. Do you want to mm. discuss that game then, Lee? Cheetahs, the Italian job complete in Parma? Yeah, I just, I, you know, like you said last week, it was hard to know what the Cheetahs are going to bring. And the good thing for me is we didn't sit back and try to counteract whatever they were bringing. We just went and played our game. And same for us, you know, there were there were a couple of errors, there were a couple of mistakes there, silly errors, stupid things that we could have put another three or four tries in. Um, I thought Steph Evans' try, uh, his first one, was short of the line. How they didn't review that is yeah, I thought that as well. It looks short, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he's done it before. You know, he's he's irritating. Like, he's such a, a good player. And, you know, he's just everywhere and he's dynamic. And then he makes silly mistakes. He did one once where he was sliding in. And instead of sliding in straight, he, sli- he slid in to the side and his foot went into touch. And you're like, you dickhead. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's bits like that. But I think, he, yeah, it's just starting to click now. It's, it's just constant improvements every week now and and that's the encouraging bit you know we we're, we're back to scoring a good amount of tries which we always knew we could um i think the try that we let in um Johnny McNichol 
just somebody's going to have a chat with Johnny McNichol on Monday and go, this is how you tackle. Now, when that play, <laughs> when that player defense runs... This is awful, isn't it? It really just, is the, bad. The, player, the, the guy came off the wing and hit a short ball. And he looked at him and he went, hey, that's good, Dad. Yeah, well done. Hey, give him a round of applause. You know, so there's little bits like that. Don't get me wrong. He's a, he's a really creative player in attack and, and deceptively quick. But, um, yeah, a little bit worried in defence. But, yeah, I just thought it was good um, to back up the week before. Yeah, it could have been a, a really easy banana skin for us because nobody really knew what the cheaters were going to be like. So to yeah. to nail a, 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 a try scoring bonus point before half time, 20, 25 minutes we had it. 20, 26 yeah. and a half minutes, I think it was. <laughs> it was so the half time score was 38 7, you know, so um, yeah. it was game over. Oh, Although cheat, cheaters did come back well mind in fairness the second half, but you never really felt Scarlets were going to lose that game, did you? You know, it was. No. Um, yeah, of course, I didn't see the games. I was uh, I was driving back from West Wales, so I haven't got much to comment on and give out about. But um, you know, all did very well. But I was I think I was texting you, Reese, as well when the Dragons were on, and you were very unfortunate not to get that a try at the end. Was it disallowed? It was the Dragons? Yeah, was the Dragons try list got disallowed at the end. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll come no. to that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I was just I was just yeah. going off script there a bit. Sorry. And when I looked, when I looked to, when I did look at uh, the rat thing, um, and I'll, I'll go back to it now. Like I, I, I commented on that, and then the decision was made. But then the Cardiff game en- uh, ended, and I just put my next message was, "Well, I'm a happy boy," because it just looked like I said, "Like I'm a happy boy" after it was disallowed. So David's going to come at me this hard. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Then so. Um, that's, that was the Scarlets then. Um, comfortable winning. It's like said, they got the Italian job done. Um, last and most certainly least, the Dragons. Um, look, I, I'm not going to pull any punches about this. I'm really, really pissed off at the Dragons because we could have had a perfect weekend for Welsh rugby. You know, all four pro teams. What a statement that would have been if all four of our sides won and the Dragons fucked it with a piss poor performance, it got to be said. I thought we were really poor and we got what we deserved. And sometimes I wonder if I'm watching a different game to everyone else because I saw a lot of comments from people say, oh, Dragons were unlucky, decisions went against them, they were shafted, you know. They weren't unlucky, they were shit. That's, that's yeah, the I, fact I read of the matter. They weren't good enough, they just they, weren't good enough. I read somewhere that it was like watching the Dragons of last season play. Exactly, it was. It was a performance like last season. What we had was uh, powder puff tackling, um, scrum being shunted back we lost the collisions all the good work that you saw by the Dragons in South Africa that was gone last night you didn't see any of it and um, part of me wonders was it complacency you know you go wonder did we just go turn up thinking well Pau ain't going to give a shit so you know we should be able to get the job done I mean let's not forget this was a, a Po team missing several of his players and they didn't even have a head coach so they came down here without the head coach with a weak team and the Dragons still lost, which is the most Dragonsy thing ever. You know, and I'm really annoyed about it because, like I said, it should have been a really perfect weekend for us rugby and the Dragons fluffed their lines. And it does hurt and sting a bit, you know, seeing other teams and other fans basking in their glory and we're licking our wounds now and we fucked it, you know? I, I think that a lot of players just play themselves out of contention for Boxing Day. I'm afraid. I mean, C.O. Tompkins said, I think he's been a great signing, but fuck me, he was dog shit. He couldn't catch a ball. His tackling was bad. You know, and he's such a good player. He's a quality player, but he had an absolute howler. Jack Dixon was poor. He was good in South Africa. I don't know what's happened. Jordan Williams still can't tackle for shit. You know, it it just, it was a really bad performance. And credit Uh, the power, you know, the best team won. And it's it's really annoyed me, actually. It has annoyed me because it feels like you know, we took a step forward in South Africa and we've had a lot of plaudits lately about our, our performances and we have been improving. And, you know, I still think Dave Lang has done a really good job. But maybe this is a reality check for us now, you know? Maybe we need to realise that actually, yeah, we still got to have a lot of work to do, you know, and we're still that that team that struggles, you know? And it, this probably will be a wake-up call, but um, I, I was so angry and disappointed with that performance. I really was. And credit the Poe, the best team won. 
See, this is what I miss yeah. about when when the dragons are playing well. I miss Jamie firing off firecrackers about, about how poor they are. <laughs> no, no, nobody fires him off like you, Jamie. And, and fair dues, as you know, it's enjoyable sitting there just watching you have it. Go it's nice for you to get off your chest, to be honest. Yeah, uh, although you, you can't go the whole week away from Cardiff game, you know, <laughs> the build up, and then that's what he's doing now. Oh, it's no, you'll be fine. now, isn't it? And, uh, and then no, you'll be fine. So no, you'll be all right. But you know, even <laughs> if that try, if if Max Clark had scored that try, which by the way was not a try, you know, no, I've gone on Dragons, I've been on Dragons Facebook today, and I've seen fans saying we were robbed. You know, it should have been a try, and it's. No, it was short if, of the if line. Wasn't it? To the, yeah, it was short of the line. And if anyone's listening to this thinking it was a try, then you need to get down to your local spec savers because it wasn't a try. <laughs> it was well short. <laughs> Even it was well short of the, of the try line, you know. And then of course you had Seal Tonkis in knocking on at the end. But even if the Dragons had one, if we go out to Jay, I mean, it would have papered over the cracks. They still would have been furious at their performance. But you know, we didn't deserve to win that game. That's the reality. That's the the sad fact, you know, and I, I am really, I am quite disheartened by that performance because we've we're better than that, and we've shown we're better than that, you know, and a lot of fans were expecting us to win. I certainly was, you know, but um, I mean, credit to Poe, they they did play well. I mean, they did turn up to play. You know, they wasn't a disinterested French team like we have seen in this competition. I thought their kicking game was excellent, by the way, compared to ours. I mean, our kicking game was atrocious. I mean, Roger Williams did a powder puff kick and they ended up being a try. They were very clever. They identified the weaknesses out wide. And if you notice, they did do a lot of those cross kicks, didn't they? You know, when Rio struggled and, you know, Ashton was struggling and they, they did kick very well in fairness. But um, yeah, I, I just feel like, and this is going to sound harsh to say, but I do feel like Dragons let Welsh rugby down this weekend. I really do. Wow. You know, like, you know, I, know, the, I know that. I know that's a big thing, don't they? I, I know that's a big thing to say, or people say, oh, that's harsh, but I do. I just, when I looked at the other teams, I saw our performance. It did feel like we'd, we'd let people down, like we let Welsh rugby down. You know, because I really wanted to. To be honest, you did. Yeah. Yeah, no, we did. We agreed. We Hang we your did. heads and shame your bastards. We should. We should, because that was the one game we were expected to win. Nobody was expecting Ospreys to win in Montpellier, you know, and Scott could have slipped up, Cardiff could have slipped up, but yeah, that was the yeah, one game sure. you would have thought the Dragons would win. And they fluffed their lines and um, very disappointed. I mean, we need to see a reaction on Boxing Day. You know, I don't think we're going to beat Cardiff. We'll come on to predictions later, but we got to see some sort of reaction because that wasn't good enough, you know, in front of the old Ronnie Parade. It is a Ronnie Parade, yeah. It's going to be a different so, game, um, though. Like, the Derby against you and your side and my side. Uh, and never like on form, are they? Like they, this, you know. I know you you you've used the term shit the bed a lot, but um, it's a different sort of rugby game that we'll be playing than the one we've each been playing against the other sides in Europe or South Africa. Playing for yeah. whale spots. So I was places. reading. Um, I was reading Dai Young's comments today. Was, um, he was on about the Dragons game, and he said, "I like what he said. Actually, cause he's actually quite right." He said, "We rode our luck on a couple of occasions when we played the Dragons, and we've only just got over the line. On occasions, we probably haven't deserved that. True, but we're going to have to be at our best to get something down there. Um, I don't think they'll have to be at their best to beat the Dragons, to be honest. But uh, be we'll see how we go. Oh, so, you know, it's a different story. You know, Derby's a different yeah. story. People, boys, are playing for their places in the Welsh squad." I've seen a couple of those, those, those um, East Wales derbies, and they've been cracking, and it could have gone either way. You know, it's, mm. it's a different, it's a different game. Throw the league out the window; it doesn't matter. It's about who comes out on top. I but, went you know. to watch when I was in uni, so before the pro days, I went to watch Cardiff and Newport down at Cardiff Arms Park. And it was like a bloodbath. <laughs> it was like 80 minutes of fighting. And then you're looking around going, has anyone got a ball? Have we just, have we forgotten where the ball is? Like the, the, the ball boy had fucked off with the ball or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just going at each other, hammer and tongs. Like, you know, in the olden days when you could properly ruck people, if somebody was on the wrong side of the ball and, you know, you you, they got a proper thinking. shoe in. Mm. There was one Newport player who literally had the shirt ripped off his back. <laughs> you know, I like, this is, uh, it, it, you, it's got a tradition of being a um, 
an intense game, shall we say, intense. That's that's how I'd describe it. That was my first mm. ever game of rugby that my grandmother took me to see was Cardiff New Birth, didn't it? And now I look back. <laughs> oh, fair play. I just hope yeah. that, like, for, for both sets of games this weekend, that they uh, have huge crowds, you mm. know, rather than, like, there's been a couple of derbies, but it's been quite disappointing. You know, I just, I'd like to see Ronnie Prade full. I'd like to see, yeah, uh, the Liberty, sorry, Swansea.com full as well. You know, well, I know we're not going to get twenty thousand, but you know, at least at least twelve would be nice. Tickets are selling well at Rodney Parade. I saw a tweet from the Dragons today. There's a lot of red areas now that have been sold out, so that's good. I think there will be a good crowd at Rodney Parade. It'd be mm. interesting to see the crowd at Sponsor.com Stadium now. Um, yeah. You know, because our space on the road, that that should get more people in Boxing Day. I mean, you'd hope they'd get. Well, how much do you reckon they'll get down there? They're not going to fill the stadium, are they? Let's be honest. No, they're not. Uh, how much do you think they could have? I'd like to see 12, 12,000 at least. Yeah, I think so, at least 10 they should definitely, definitely. When we, at least 10. When we so play on either side of the, of the pitch, you know. Hmm. But when we play at home, and that game is at home, we put 14, we, we fill that stadium every time when it's at home. So the, it's 10 miles. It's not like it's a massive journey. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So exactly. it should be at least 14, 15,000 there, particularly given the, you know, the, the way... Welsh rugby just kind of, I don't know, feels feels like it's in a process of change. Nobody really knows what's going on sort of a thing. So, you know, it's an interesting time to be watching a game. So, mm. But before we move on to this weekend and stuff, so I, I've got an email from a, um, from a listener and stuff, but before we get on to that, did you see, so some of the other European games today, did you see the uh, Northampton and Munster game? I no, I saw the score, going a bit when two of the lads were yellow carded. I don't know what happened. I just saw them being yellow carded. Proper, proper rules. You know, in the olden days when the subs used to run on and and your granny'd run on with an umbrella for the for the fight, it was like that. There were just people coming from everywhere, and the the referees not even blowing the whistle. He's going, "What the fuck's the point in blowing the whistle?" And they were just going at each other, hammer and talk. I couldn't even work out what set it off, but it was. Proper, proper old school. And then <clears throat> the Sale and Toulouse game. Did anybody watch like the last two minutes of it? No. So it's, it's gone no, over the that. eight gone over the eighty minutes, right? And say I think Sale were losing. They need or they needed a try or whatever. So they go up the pitch and make a break. The guy dives for the line <clears throat> and Comes up short, but kind of knocks it on. He thought he scored. Bang! Ball bounces off. Referee goes play on, and to lose, run it length of the pitch, and they score back down the other end. Yeah, and in between the two, there's fights going on at the ruck up by the to lose try line. There's a fight going on at the far end as well. It was the best two minutes of rugby ever. <laughs> the referee <laughs> spoke to the TMO, and you know, and he, and he goes, "Right, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah." And he just went, "Oh, right." <laughs> it was just like, "Where the fuck do I start with this one?" But it was a really good finish to the game. So yeah, if you get a chance, watch the I'll end of this game. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. So, oh, sorry, can I just? Luck. I watched all four regional games, like, isn't it? So I'd have been pushing my luck to watch it. <laughs> I just want to quickly say something before you go, because I, for, I should mention it, because I forgot to mention I was ranting about the Dragons then. I want to give a shout out to Ryan Woodman, 18 year old making his debut. Thought he played really well when he come off his bench, uh, come off the bench. Really good to see now youngsters, um, you know, being developed and brought into the Dragons. We've seen Shea Hope, we've seen Brody Coughlin, and you know, we've seen Will Reed come on nicely. And yeah, Ryan Woodman is one to, for the future. I was really pleased to see him make his debut, only eighteen. So uh, yeah, just a shout out for him and and for Bradley as well for his uh, his try. So I thought Bradley played well, but other than that, yeah, not much to uh, write about him. Afraid. Bradley, well. Okay, you can go on to the uh, email now. If I'm oh, like, what did you say, Bradley Walsh? <laughs> Bradley Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Bradley Roberts. <laughs> Bloody, will you shut up about the dragons, man? It's those dragons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mr. Sharks. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, so, um, uh, email from listener. So, Paul. Paul emails quite a bit, and I try and, and get his questions in. And like every mm. time, every time he, he emails in, I'm kind of like 
trying to get it in and trying to find a, a bit to get it in and it's gone before I, I, I get the email up. So um, I said the next time he emailed in, I, I promised I'd get it on. So a message from Paul. So with rumours of some players taking a 50% pay cut and 5 million salary cap as part of the new six-year agreement between the regions and the WIU, is it now more important that the four current regions simply survive instead of thriving and challenging the Irish and South African teams in the USC in Europe? So for me... With rumours of losing a region and going down to three, I think it's more important that we retain four regions and just survive for the foreseeable future. God, that was a long one. It is a survival game, though, isn't it, at the moment? Whether we go down to three or, you know, we go down to three or not, it's, it's, it's all survival now. Um, and you I am a thrive. Convinced. You still want to thrive. Well, of course. No what you go down to. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a great question, but. Oh yeah, I, I don't like the idea of going down to three teams. I, you know, we're, we're we're a proud nation, and we we should make this work. We should make the four regions work. We should invest in our in our youth coming through and build that strong strong regions and a strong strong national team. And you know, necessity. Yeah. All all the regions have been bringing through a lot of really good youth players. Like team who's just attested to the Dragons. When his love comes through at Cardiff, we've seen it as Scarlets, and we've been talking about it at Ospreys, isn't it? So we are relying on those uh, youth players coming through as well, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think it'll be as bad as as we make out. Because I, I was saying this on um, on my Scarlets podcast a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so Gareth Davis, excellent servant to. Um, to the Scarlets, but he's on so much money. We could have, you know, three youth players, three uh, academy graduates for the salary that we're paying him. And you know, in that particular position, we're fully stacked. You know, we we got some but really then, good players. That we, that we say, say really you got rid of him. If you mm-hmm. get rid of Gareth Davis, sorry to interrupt. You get rid of Gareth Davis, and you bring your three youth players. Through. Does that mean Gareth can go and play in England, France, and we yeah. should scrap the sixty cap rule completely? So there is well, the no, opportunity yeah. for them to come play for Wales. No, I I keep the sixty cap there and just say that you know, because um, there, there's something about the, the the grading of the pay you get is to do with when you last played for Wales or something like that. So <clears throat> you know, his last contract was quite a big contract, and you're now in a position where actually, yeah, I think his time in Wales is gone. He, he's he's a cracking. Club player now, same as Reese Webb, but, yeah, but their, their, their time in the national setup has gone, and yeah, yeah probably absolutely. is time for them to move on and make room for. Th- so I saw today rumours of Alan Wynne Jones going. You know, he, he's one of the ones that's going to have to take a a, a a hefty pay cut. So, you know, as much as he loves the Ospreys, when somebody he's says he's a one club man, isn't he? You know, he's a one club man at the moment. Yeah, but he could go to Japan for twelve months and earn three times the amount that he could get on on his con. Uh, Osprey's fair play to him as well. Do you know what I mean? Listen, so, if if anyone deserves a big payday in the yeah, sun, it's Adam Wynn Jones. Yeah. He is yeah. one guy that earned it. I don't think any Osprey fan or anywhere should be found with complaint. No, absolutely. If that yeah. happened, because that bloke deserves it. Mm. Being pretty soon to our rugby. What what yeah. I think will then happen, you know, is you. We've been saying all season, you know, we need to develop youngsters. We need to allow youngsters to come in and give them the, you know, the opportunity to play. That's exactly then what happens, you know. And and it'll be difficult for a couple of seasons, you know. It'll be a development curve for a couple of seasons, but it'll be a development curve, and development curves go upwards, and we'll have a lot of young players coming through, and we'll have to readjust our academy systems. We'll have to readjust our recruitment systems, but in on the whole. I think that will actually benefit a lot of players. I think it will benefit the Premiership as well, the, the um, Welsh Premiership. You know, I think mm-hmm. more um, more like uh, professional players will be semi-professional, and then when you get an injury, you know they're back in, and that, so it'll increase the 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 standard of the the Premiership and things like that. So, you know. We can look at it positively, we can look at it negatively, and you know, somewhere in between the two is the balance of what will happen. But I think there's a lot of good things that could come from it, but it's going to take a bit of time to bed in. It's when we know the details, like we said last time, it's about the details. We need to know the details about what's happening. So, 
So yeah. yeah. Can I? Can I, can I just interrupt? No, nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with rugby. I just read a tweet that made me laugh. It's from one of one of the followers, uh, Phil Neath, nineteen eighty one, and it says, "Just to shove it up England more, a Welsh speaking country has just won the football World Cup." Oh yes, Argentina, of course. <laughs> Patagonia, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it. But um, uh, going going back to Paul's question about surviving rather than thriving, well, we've been doing that for years. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's what the it's regions true. have been doing. And I'm still convinced, I said this on the pod a while ago, I, I am convinced in the next few years or so, we, it will go down to three teams. And I don't know if you guys saw Steve Phillips this week. He came out and he said, we can't guarantee four teams. No, that's what he came yeah. out and said. Um and I, I sadly think it is going to happen. And I said that it's either going to be the Dragons or Ospreys. I, I don't think, I, you know, Cardiff would be fine to say the capital. I think Scarlets will survive because they do have better factors and, you know, they, they will be there. But um, the Scarlets have their own stadium, whereas the Ospreys are sharing. You know, even though I think the Ospreys have really, truly embraced regional rugby out of all mm. four regions, the Dragons, I think, have started now because with this, just it's just. The Dragons RSC, not the Newport Point Dragon, none of that. It's just the Dragons. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I don't know. It's a tough one. It'd be tough to swallow if we lose the Ospreys, to be honest. Yeah. They've been such a good team over the years. To imagine. <laughs> but when you look at how good, when you look at how good this weekend was, right, for the Welsh teams, like, mm. I don't know about you guys, but I watched it and I thought, imagine if we were properly financed and fully funded and we didn't have these issues in our game, how good we could be. You know, it does make you think, you know, if we were supported properly by our union, all our teams, we, you know, we really could be competing a lot better than yeah. we do. Player development, uh, well, the grassroots game, all sorted out there. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know this is like slightly off subject and, and what have you. Yeah. It's not just the game. When, so I, I work in local government and what have you. Yeah. And you look at the amount of money that was coming into local government pre-2016 and then you have 2016 and everything that happens there <clears throat> and we're just the the amount of money that is now um, shortfalling is, is going to be when, when your your council tax bills come in next year you're in for a shock you're in for a real big shock because the amount of money that was coming in and now isn't yeah. All all of the European projects are winding up. They they're finishing and what have you. There's millions and millions that are short. So if that's you know if that's government, if that's your local government, then your business side is worse. I can guarantee that. So you know, and that's they work in the commercial sector, they work in entertainment, they work in you know all of this, all of the sectors that are vulnerable. That's the sector that rugby clubs are working in, and yeah, we were warned. <laughs> I I know it's no good for us now, and I know it's off subject and it's political and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's it's so so on, on that depressing note, we move on to the, the result of the uh, the. Scarlet's lost to the Ospreys next week. <laughs> you know I haven't got Archie the energy don't, to go back at you. <laughs> <laughs> I just say fuck off and then leave it there. <laughs> so should I... we go into the uh, predictions then? Do you want to yeah. pick off? Okay, so first we got... Somebody um... else is going to have to write them down, by the way, because I, I, I've lost my pad again. Oh, have, have we got a pen and paper next to them? No. Uh, no. Use write... your phone. I'll write it down when uh, when when I put it out. You record it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll write them down then. Right. So kicking off there, this Dragons Cardiff. Uh, oh, well, I mean, Dragons haven't beaten Cardiff in the league since 2014 Boxing Day, I believe. Do any of us really think that's going to change? Yeah, me. Yeah. You think you think Dragons will beat Cardiff, do you? Just see, to piss see, you or you just. <laughs> Just to piss you oh, off. Right, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, you predicted a win last week, and look what happened. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cheers! Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you bastard! <laughs> I was just trying to. <laughs> nice. Right. Why only is dying, Reese? What? What do you? Uh, what's your prediction there? What do you think? Cardiff by ten. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you there, Carwin? Yeah, what do you I'm make? sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. I'd like to see the Dragons win, but I'm going to have to go Cardiff by 12. Okay. Lee, what are you saying? Draw. 12 all. Draw? Draw. 12 all. The most boring game ever. <laughs> <laughs> with just oh, seven, 70 <laughs> minutes of fighting and then a, a couple of penalties. Like, oh, they just dear. drag each other down. Yeah, I, I, I've always said I, I don't like the Starbies. It's too one-sided. Um, you know what the outcome's going to be before ball's being kicked. I don't know why, but Dragons have an inferiority complex against <laughs> Cardiff. Um, it's ridiculous. Come on, you can, you can do this, Jamie. You can go for the Dragons. Come on. Yeah, come on, Jamie. No, I, 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 come on, no, I Jamie. Won't. No, I won't. I, won't. I, I generally, no, because I, I don't <laughs> believe they will beat Cardiff. I think they'll shit the bear like they always do. Yay, um, there it is. <laughs> I can't decide if it's going to be a blowout by Cardiff or whether it'll be a tight win. But it's going to, Cardiff are going to win it either way, but it's going to be one of those where I think Cardiff will either run away with it because when they click... Yeah, give us some points. Give they. us some points. So um, I'm going to go Cardiff by... I'm going to say 13 now. <clears throat> All right, Cardiff by 30. Yeah. I really hope I'm wrong. Please prove me wrong, Dragons. But um, I nah, somehow don't. Don't worry, Dragons. Yeah, just... Uh, you yeah. doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Right, okay then. So, um, Osprey Scarlets now. Um, who wants to kick off this one then? Go on, What's Lee. your prediction? Come on, I'm dying <laughs> to hear this. So, I, I think Scarlets have been... Scarlet have been scoring some cracking tries over the last couple of weeks, and Osprey's defence has been superb over the last couple of weeks, and that's where we've both been winning games. So I think those two will cancel them out. So I think it's more about how much has the Scarlet's defence improved, and can the Osprey start scoring decent tries? So it's kind of flips it round, <clears throat> and I think the Scarlet's going to come out on top by seven points. Ooh, seven. Okay, Carwin. Well, it's pointless asking you. We know where you're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> how many by Ospreys, sir? Ospreys by how many? 15. 15? Ospreys by a solid 15 points. Ooh, okay. They're going to be riding on a wave of superiority after this massive win in Europe. You're uh, really... Well, I, I, no, no, seriously, no, it depends... On any changes made in the team, I don't know. I, I would say, I'll be, I'll be honest. I genuinely, I think Osprey's by about nine. Well, make um, your mind up. Yeah, well, look, by nine, I'm giving you, giving you a, a fair shot. He's of being the, kind to you. Know. <laughs> yeah, I'm also being kind, to, being kind to my liver, just in case I lose on the prediction side again. I was going to um, say, yeah. you're really enjoying losing the predictions <laughs> game, aren't you? We're all being a bit more careful now, aren't we? Not to have a deal with our predictions. Uh, yeah, a draw. Added I mean, how many edge. points do we get there? Like, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, then, Reese, what's your prediction for Osprey's I'll go for Osprey's. I'll go for Osprey's by 10. Osprey's by 10. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go for Osprey's win for two reasons. One, because I think they ride in a crest of the wave with that fantastic win in Montpellier, and they think they'll give them huge confidence and momentum going to this game. And the other reason is simply that they are at home. I, I, I think if this was a pack of Scarlets, I might have slightly edged towards the Scarlets, but um, yeah, I am going to go for the Ospreys. Um, I think it's going to be a tighter game than you guys have said. I'm going to go Ospreys by three points, I am. I think it'll come down to a, mm. like a late penalty. I think it's going to be really tight and edgy, and it might come down to a... Like a first game in the draw. Penalty. Yeah, I, I think it'd be that kind of attritional type game. So I'm yeah. going to go for Osprey's by three. Tip Rook oh, yeah. should have been sent off. That one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Apparently so. Been. Yes, he should have. <laughs> anyway, you're all <laughs> bastards. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got What's the energy. To, <laughs> I haven't got the energy to tell you why, but let's just assume you're all bastards for predicting a Scarlet's lost. <laughs> ah, well, fucking hell. <laughs> Listen, wish you all the best. Have a good Christmas, guys. Yeah, and you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Merry Christmas, and, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The dollar flowing. Uh, Hope you all have a good The dollar flowing. Yeah, yeah. and in, enjoy uh, the festivities and enjoy the derbies. I can't wait for the banter to begin. 
Um, what do you mean, wait? <laughs> I mean, we've been having a go at each other all day mate, already. <laughs> we've we got a, a week, we've got eight days I have until forgotten. we kick off. I, I forgot I am actually working Boxing Day, so I will be on radio. Oh. oh. Last um, yeah, I'll be on radio. So, if, if, do you say the Dragons Cardiff games on first? Yes, it is. All right, I, won't I think I said court bus to kick off. I like, think fingers court bus to something like that, but don't yeah. quote me on that. Yeah, it is. I got a pantomime. I got my daughter's pantomime. So, what time? I, I should be there, but it's all leg uh, permitting. <laughs> Hoppy. Yeah. 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 Hop along, but Hello, sure. Right, well, we will be back uh, over the Christmas period. We will keep going over the Christmas period, and we might do a few extras and and what have you. But um, be yeah, like, <laughs> 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 like Jamie said, yeah. <laughs> yes, make it to Christmas. Yeah, so um, yeah, big um, Merry Christmas to all the listeners and and all the other yeah. stuff. And, yeah, uh, we we'll catch you again after. Next week. Fuck, I can't even remember Boxing what day, day it is. Jesus Christ. Like, he, he looks rough as fuck, mate, didn't he? He does look dark, uh, <laughs> Thank you for Fair that, Jim. Have a good Enjoy all of us. Have a good Christmas. Have a good day. ta da Bye now. ta da Charlie, have a good day, mate. Oh, mate. Thank you for listening to this week's show. We hope you enjoyed it enough to come back next week and listen again. So please do subscribe, rate and review the pod as it really helps us on most of the platforms that we appear on. You can keep the conversation going on Twitter and Facebook by searching for us on RAP, W-R-R-A-P. Or you can email us on Welsh Regional Rugby Pod at Gmail. Dot com. We'll be back next week to do some more of the same. We hope you'll come and enjoy us. And in the meantime, enjoy your rugby. Sports Social Podcast Network. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.